a okay. slightly fudged introduction to you, but I will uh, look forward to our next conversation. So let's go back to the uh, social media story I was talking about just a moment or two ago. Essentially, this study has found that children's life satisfaction actually has very little to do with their time spent online. But of course, if you believe what we're told in the press on, a, on an almost daily basis, social media is uh, pretty much universally responsible for uh, increased numbers of uh, children seeking mental health support, even suicide in some examples. Now, social media expert Katie Howe joins me now. Let, let me start with this latest report then, Katie. Are, are you surprised to hear this, uh, this latest result? Not at all. Um, for some time I thought that the media take on social media is, is somewhat skewed. Okay. Um, in particular, what I liked about this report is it's really in-depth. They looked at 12,000 UK teens, yes. so it's really solid research. Um, why do you think it is, then, that social media does tend to get an unfair press? I think when, when things go wrong on social, they go really wrong, don't they? They're, they're very acute and they're extraordinarily painful. I mean, let's face it, teenagers are, are fairly... Um, uh, difficult in terms of that's a difficult time to manage, isn't mm. it? It's, mm. it's a difficult period in their lives. There's also there's an awful lot of change, specifically when they move from one school to another, etc. Mm. I think the really interesting part of this is that it, it, social media for most teens tends to reflect their real life friendships, and it's only when they begin to feel isolated that they start to explore further, or if they're being teased um, yes, or, bullied or bullied on social. So I'm not saying they, this stuff doesn't happen, I'm just saying it's so acute and so painful and has such terrible outcomes mm. that I think it gets more press coverage than, you know, the everyday Snapchat. I think that's a, that's uh, that's fair, but I also feel, despite the fact that we're talking about 12,000 10 to 15 year olds who were surveyed here, that, that, and that is a robust number, if I was to ask any given teenager whether they enjoyed their time on social media and whether they feel it affected their lives negatively, they'd probably say no, because they quite like social media and they quite like to use it. <laughs> and they also might not necessarily have a deep decent grasp on the state of their own mental health. Isn't that fair? Uh, yeah, I would agree. I would agree to some extent. And I'd also say if you've ever spent any time on Snapchat, you know, forget Facebook, they're not there, but on Snapchat and say Instagram, in the main, what you see is quite a lot of <laughs> trivial drivel, I think is the way of it. <laughs> because they're, they're typical teenagers and they're talking about things that really don't matter. So but it matters to them and that's the point, isn't it? It matters to them, yeah. And, but I do think it's just, it's almost like a free conversation. It fills up a lot of social rather than the issues we tend to think of as bigger issues. Mm. Um, it doesn't stop the obligation of the social network to do more to hide kind of posts that, that ah, are terrible. Now that's key because this mm. report does conclude that there is still much more that we don't know about mm. the long-term effects of social media and, and uh, mm. on, on children's mental health. So we can't just pretend that everything's okay as a result of no. this one study, can we? No, absolutely not. In fact, one of the issues, social media or anything, is the blue screen of, a, a, of our devices now, which is impacting sleep, and it's the one thing teenagers need. Yeah, it's interesting to hear you talk so positively about social media, Katie. Let's talk to Caroline mm -hmm. Chan now, who's a children's music teacher from Camden. Caroline, thank you so much for coming on the programme this evening. Oh, good evening. Um, how do you feel about social media then, and, and how, um, how often young people and teenagers in particular rely on it to, to interact with the world? Uh, well, I'm obviously coming from a completely opposite point of view from the lady you've been speaking to. And um, I've been working with children over the last 20 years, and I, am, I write music and songs. And um, I found myself increasingly concerned about the negative effects of technology, phones on children. I see, you know, mums giving young children these phones to keep them quiet, to keep them occupied. They're continually photographing their children and not interacting with them in the way that they would be if they weren't photographing them. Mm -hmm. And it's led me to write music about this. And I've read a whole, I've written a whole series called My Imagination and Me because I was concerned that children didn't seem to be able to access their imaginations very easily because they expect everything to be immediate because of the, the phones that they're holding and the iPads. And, um, you know, I just feel increasingly just worried and, and concerned. And I speak to so many parents, so many teachers, and they all say the same thing, but they all feel absolutely 
unable to do anything about it because it's such a vast problem. And I think when phones first came in, mm. they were like a safety thing for children and they could contact their parents. And I think nobody could see how it was going to explode and being out of control. So I just think these phones are not toys for children to have at all. And I think we should ban them. No child should have a smartphone. And unless we do that, we're going to have bigger and bigger problems escalating. Well, well like what? And, what, what sort of problems do you envisage as, as smartphones and social media pervade their way into our, our children's lives uh, so deeply? Well, when, when you buy a toy for a child, it has safety that it's been tested to be safe for a child. When you give a child a smartphone, you're giving them something which you're not going to be able to control what they're doing with this phone. We are safeguarding children all the time to such an extent that it's so difficult for, for people to just, you know, sort of work in schools or whatever without huge safety checks. And yet we're handing them a piece of equipment which could be worth 500, 600 pounds, giving them to take to school. They're all playing with them on the on the buses. I see it all the time. And and um, there's no control over what these children are accessing. But and you, we but have all the time tutorials about how parents should supervise or, or you know control what their children are. and if you took them away this possibility you wouldn't be having that conversation sure, um, but with the greatest respect this this study is, is is robust it's 12,000 yeah, study was done by asking children it, there was nothing done by asking parents and teachers mm. so I think it's very very misleading and I think it's also very damaging because a lot of parents and a lot of people say okay that's okay it's been proved that there's no there isn't a problem now but you're asking the very people who are actually Actually addicted to these phones and want to use them all the time so of course they're happy and, and they don't see it as a problem well, but the problem is when they're not interacting with with properly with outside you know with human beings sure okay well so let, let's bring let's bring katie back in on that point then so <laughs> katie we, we're not asking the right people children as i as i suggested to you aren't going to say we don't like our phones we don't like mm. what, what they're doing to us because they love them well, I think I think there's two perspectives. I mean, I agree. It's a balanced argument from my perspective. It's it's any child that's spending voluminous amounts of time on social media has got a problem, and we need to identify it. But but we should be fighting technology. I know this is a generation that's going to grow up with sure. technology in their hands. Well, let's just, um, let me just give the final word to Caroline on this because I spoke to two young Can men. I Go, well, go on, Caroline. We respond to that. So I'm just going to ask ask whether whether people feel or whether it's why is it all right to give a child because presumably their child and their children until they're adults. So these are children we're talking about, teenagers. Mm. Why is it thought to be okay to give children something which is not proved to be safe? And you don't give them alcohol and, and say, I trust that you're not going to drink it. Mm. You're, they're not allowed to smoke cigarettes. And yet they're able to access God knows what whenever they want with their friends. Why is that OK? And I think it's the white elephant in the room that nobody is facing because they just don't know how to control it or well, what to do about it. It's almost like it's too late. I appreciate your take on it, Caroline. Thank you very much indeed. And yet we spoke to Ruben and Malachi just before the news who use social media to send out their creativity and the music videos they're making so when the two worlds collide that imagination and creativity that caroline was talking about and then the world of social media uh, that was being endorsed by katie it can work can't it but it needs to be done in a way that doesn't affect lives negatively and that's that's the difficulty um i'd love to hear what you think about this do you agree with katie or caroline here that social media a force for good or evil with our children's lives 0800 731 2000